In this video, I'm going to show you how I make pizza at home in my own oven. And we are going to be using ingredients that I purchased from Trader Joe's. This is what I'm going to use to make uh, the pizza, and as you can see, it really is pizza by Trader Joe. I've got Trader Joe pizza sauce, I've got Trader Joe shredded cheese, and I've got Trader Joe pizza dough. And honestly, I've tried all kinds of take and make pizza doughs, and this is my favorite. I absolutely love it. Um, this is what I make for our pizza on like we have it maybe once a week and this is how I always make it I just um, love this combination and I'm going to show you today how I put it all together and make our uh, mostly homemade pizza uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is get it out of this package and into a bowl and let it um, have a couple of hours um, the warmth and um, that will make the dough a lot easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take it out of here. I'm going to put it in a bowl, cover it with a towel and just let it uh, sit until I'm ready to actually make the pizza a little bit later on this afternoon. My pizza dough has been sitting covered in a bowl for a couple of hours and so it's come up to room temperature. You can see it's bubbled up a little bit. It doesn't really rise per se, but this dough is so much easier to work with when it's warm. I'm using a rimmed baking sheet and I've got a Silpat mat on the bottom and I've sprinkled it with a little flour and now I'm going to add a little bit of flour to the dough. This is a very uh, wet, sticky dough, and so I find that adding a little all-purpose flour really makes it easier to handle. Okay, I am just a home cook. I am not a professional chef, <laughs> and so this is how I work with the dough. I just kind of gently stretch it out. I allow gravity to help me with the process because this dough is a little bit hard to work with. If you haven't used one of these make and bake doughs, um, they really can be uh, a little difficult, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, what happens is as you stretch it out, the dough wants to rebound to where it was. And so you have to be just patient and work with it. Uh, okay, here, <laughs> this is kind of funny. So my um, rolling pin, I had a marble rolling pin and it broke. And so now I'm just using this plastic cup. And uh, you know what? It does the job. It works. And because I put that little bit of flour, it doesn't stick. I don't, I didn't have to add anything to the cup. And it just, you know, it, it works. Sometimes when you're cooking, you, you just you have to work with what you have. And I have this and it works fine. And you can see that I'm just uh, gently uh, moving this dough around in the pan. Um, I stretch it, it wants to rebound a little bit and I stretch it again. A lot of times you can just like stop working with it, let it rest and then come back to it. Uh, but eventually now I've got it where it fills the hole of this pan. Oh, and there's my cat. Hi, Minnow. And now I'm just adding my um, tomato sauce. This is like a traditional style pizza with a red sauce and mozzarella cheese and you know you just put this on to your liking I like a little more sauce than um, than than not 
And so I just put it on and even it out as best I can. I just use the back of a large spoon. And I'm going to add my mozzarella cheese right onto the sauce. And I like a little extra cheese, so I'll put it on there. You can customize your pizza with your favorite toppings. Here I'm putting on just a little bit of red pepper flakes because I like the spice. And for my toppings, I've gone with sliced cherry tomatoes and a yellow heirloom tomato and black olives. And now I'm putting this pizza on the top rack of my preheated oven. And I'm baking at 475 and I'm setting my timer for 15 minutes. Oh, it looks so good. Uh, so you could take it out at this point, but I always finish my pizzas off with a quick broil. So I'll set the broil for two minutes, and what that does is really bubble up the cheese. Oh, look at that, isn't that amazing? So now we're going to take it out, and this is the hardest part of the process. You pull out your delicious pizza, and then uh, you let it wait. It has to rest. And I always go between 15 and 20 minutes. So while the pizza is resting, I'll add some Parmesan cheese. This melts by the heat of the pizza. Now I'm adding some fresh uh, basil. I picked this from my garden. This is called a chiffonade. And what you're doing is you're just rolling all the leaves up into a little bundle and then you slice them into these little thin ribbons. And I'm going to sprinkle those on top. time has passed and now I can come in and slice the pizza. The reason that you let your pizza rest is that it gives the toppings a chance to sort of set up. And so if you were to cut the pizza right away out of the oven, what you wind up having is all of your toppings just sliding off of the crust. Where if you can be patient and wait that 15 minutes, you get this wonderful slice and all of your toppings will stay perfectly intact. Just like this. Look at that. And there is our beautifully home-baked slice of pizza. Oh, look at that beautiful golden yellow heirloom tomato there in the first bite. And because you're the guest, I'm going to give you the first bite. Yummy!